Hey, did you ever try to learn something that just would not sink in? Did you wish there was some kind of method or trick or something that would help you to learn it a little easier? Well, our next guest is a pro at creating technique that will help children learn. My name is Vin DeQuino, and our next guest is Bob Zaslow. Bob, yes, sir. let's talk writing. <laughs> Glad to see you. Same here, Vinny. Thank you. So, Bob, let's first find out a little bit about you. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I started off, I, I was a teacher, and then I switched to a filmmaker. I became a documentary filmmaker. What? You might not know that. For a short time, couldn't make much of a living at it. Yeah. And um, I had some friends in the advertising business, and they went into advertising as a copywriter. Uh, and that worked out great. I learned all about how to write, uh, and actually that's what led me to writing the, uh, the, the, the things I write now. Um, now, uh, after, when I hit 45, um, I suddenly was no longer hip and cool, <laughs> and uh, I, along with a hundred other people, was let go in a budget crunch and went back to teaching. And I love it. It's been great. And I'm, but I'm using everything I've learned as a, as an advertising copywriter, to to help engage my students. So one of the interesting things you do, I'm fascinated by some of the things. Uh, you create raps. You create poems. Uh, tell me a little bit about the first thing. How, wh uh, how did this all begin for you? Well, it began back in the advertising agency, Gray Advertising. Uh, two of my colleagues were. Tom Yoey and George Newell. Those are the guys who wrote Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, right. They, they were just down the hall from me. <laughs> and uh, I'm this young kid, and I, and I learned a lot from those guys. The, the, the thing that they told me was, if you want to write a show for kids, you better make sure it's really entertaining, and then sneak in with the education. There you go. So I started thinking, well, I'd love to do a show of my own, a series I was a history buff on the history of the world. The whole history was pretty, pretty uh, <laughs> long daunting. show. <laughs> but, but it was going to be 13 episodes. I wrote a, a couple, um, and 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 so that's what got me started. I actually wrote a, a show on the history of the world, and uh, and started with ancient Egypt. That was the oh, very wow. first rap. And uh, yeah, yeah. Can you give us a little taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I remember it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yo, yo, yo. Okay. Civilization started with one nation, Egypt's the beginning, the Nile kept them winning. 3000 BC, they knew as much as you and me about river irrigation to start the agriculture nation. It's history, no mystery. The people are Egyptians, we know from their inscriptions. The Nile flooded, the stretch of land got studded, but fertile soil for farming, the surplus was alarming. They traded with their neighbors, the Mesopotamians, never needed money, used the barter system money, and it goes on like that. So Amazing. Now, history. But were there other subjects as well? That, that well, they, uh, I actually, when I, I'm going to switch gears now to when I was a fifth grade teacher. Okay. And uh, I, so, so here I could write rhymes. I don't okay. consider myself a poet, but I'm a rhymer. <laughs> and, uh, and so I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a fifth grade teacher now. How can I use rhymes and, and what I know to help these kids learn? So I, I'm teaching in the Bronx, and I... And I thought, okay, we're learning social studies. We're learning South America. Okay. And so I said, okay, kids, listen, we're going to break the class up into seven groups of four, 28 kids. Each of you is going to get a big sheet of paper, and you're going to write down your climate, your environment, your uh, geography, your history. And each had a different section of the textbook. And they wrote all the important stuff, all the important stuff. Uh, and then I said, okay, now here's the tricky part. I want you to write a, a four or six line sort of a poem where the last words, two words, the couplets end in, in, a, in a rhyme or something that sounds like a rhyme. And that's where I helped them. <laughs> and that's what they did. So I went from table to table and helped them make their rhymes. And then I took all the papers home with me, went wow. on the computer and typed in a one page, one and a half page rap <laughs> of the Brazil rap. <laughs> and the rest, I, I'm telling you, Vinny, these kids went from a lot of them failing social studies to getting 85s, 90s, 95s, Brilliant. unbelievable results. Yeah. Because we had to, they had to memorize it, they had to perform it, and then when I'd ask the questions, they would be, they'd get them. So sort of a painless way of learning. 
I, I thought so. The yeah. kids loved it. And do you we, have, did, uh, we did that with Peru, with Ecuador. I mean, you know, we yeah. did it with... Do you have a little taste of the Brazilian rap? No, you know, I don't have oh, that. You don't. I, I oh, looked, I looked yesterday on my computer. It's it's 10 years old, and it, oh, it, it okay. wasn't there. I don't, I don't know. All right, Sorry. so the Brazilian rap got you all excited, and you knew that you had something special yeah. here. And where did you go from there? Well, I thought, okay, it's, it works with, with that. What about... Math. What Math? about reading? Yeah, so <laughs> that I have, that I did bring. I, I have. I wrote something called Hip Hop Math. Okay. Uh, it's long. It's it's really. All right. Long. Give us a but good I'll taste. But I'll just give you a taste. Yeah. It starts off with an introduction. Is math your thing? Don't worry if it's not, and you won't have to sing. Just rap a lot with rhythm and rhyme. You keep the time, and you'll get fast at hip hop math. So. Now it has multiplication, ovation rap, and how to memorize the times table, wow. addition facts. So let me give you the fractions, actions rap, because even grown-ups have trouble with fractions. Now I like pizza, I bet you do too. Here's a slice for me and a slice for you. What, that's not fair, you say? Why not? We each got half my way. Now I'm just kidding. What I'm really saying is to be fair and square, the size slice gotta be the same. How do you, how do you do, uh, how you do that's easy is eating sun-dried tomato with something I call the lowest comedy slicinator. <laughs> Look, one half is the same as two fourths, right? And two fourths equals four eighths. So let's not fight. If eight friends share one pizza, each one gets one out of eight, or as I like to say, eights is the lowest comedy slicinator. Now your teacher has another way to say it later. Go with her, the lowest common denominator, and it goes on like that. Uh, so, I uh, this really worked. Um, so they learn concepts, they learn terms. Yeah, uh, and then uh, I told them it's lowest common denominator. Some some kid wrote lowest common deslicinator on his test. <laughs> I gave him full credit for it. Oh, there you go, deslicinator. Uh, but anyway, so I did this whole math thing. So math works too, and uh, the idea is to get the facts that they need to know and put them in some form of poem or rap. Now, are all of your techniques pretty much a rap kind of thing that they can sing, or is it uh, some of it just what, poetry? Or most of it is a syncopated rap. Yeah, this yeah, way uh, they have. Uh, they don't need a musical beat. They don't need music. Right. Uh, uh, but but there's a natural beat. I mean, after all, ever since, I mean, or, or, oral tradition has been po poetry has been rhyming words for. What, yeah. 3,000 years, 2,500 years? Shakespeare's been doing it. Dr. Homer Seuss. Homer did it. I mean, yeah. Uh, Dr. Seuss wrote how many books? And children just fell in love with it. Yeah, I still, I still have hop on pop memorized. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. So, uh, Speaking of reading, okay. if I may, yeah. I'm going to leave. Yeah, uh, yeah. I did write the reading strategies rap. Now, I don't know. In my school, we're, going, we're getting better and better in, in our standardized reading tests. That's a good but thing. But this is... I came up with, uh, this is, I shouldn't say I came up with, there are a, a number of different strategies for reading. I, I narrowed it down to five. So before you begin yeah. that, so what you do is you sit and say, okay, what do I want these children to learn? And you take all of these facts and then you start to organize them into verse, into rhyming. So the first thing you do is basically research, research what it is you want to teach. And once you get that settled, then you create the rap, then you teach them the rap. Now, do you give them a certain time? I mean, do, do they then, like even for the reading rap, get together in groups and learn as a group? Or do they take it home for homework? It depends. With my fifth graders, I gave this, what did I do? This I did all on my own. And then I gave it to them to, to go home. And then I gave each group a different section. There were five groups. Each one had uh, was responsible for their section. So when they went up and presented, everybody could hear them. So yeah, it, it depends on the class, but okay. generally I try to break it up. It's hard, you know. All right. So give us a little taste. Well, of the this. reading. I'll, I'll just do part of it. All right. Okay. The reading strategies wrap. It goes like this, Vinny. Yo, 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 reading isn't only saying words on a page, just like acting isn't just standing on a stage. No, you got to ask yourself every now and then, do I know what's going on? Do I know why and when? Do I know who and how? Do I know who and where? Do I know what's happening or do I not even care? Hey, if you don't even care, then just stop right there. You might as well quit because you ain't going nowhere. But if you care about what all those words are saying, then it'll take help from above. I don't mean just praying. I mean help from above your shoulders, if you please. Here come the five really good reading strategies. One, predicting. 
Predicting means making a good educated guess. Ask yourself, what do I think is going to happen next? Being a reading detective and look for the clues. You lose your good common sense. You cannot lose. Then I go on. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear the strategies. Get, okay, number two, yep. retelling. Retelling. Retelling means telling the story in your own words. You could call it summarizing, but that word sounds like a nerd's. So how do you retell a story? You tell the main stuff. Let's do one right now. It shouldn't be too tough. Can I do this? Do I have to? Yeah, please. Right. The three bears. Goldilocks is lost in the woods and does something that wasn't too good. She broke into the three bears' empty house after trashing a place for the sleep like a mouse. When the bears got home, were things right? They were not. When they found Goldilocks, she took off like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you retell the story, just tell the main points, you hear? Remember that when you read Macbeth or King Lear. Mm -hmm. I'll get to that later. Three, <laughs> visualize. Ever watch a movie and you believe it's real? You jump when you're scared. When it's funny, you squeal. Well, wouldn't you like to see a movie when you're reading in bed? You can. It's the movie you got in your head. And then I go on with that. Four, ask questions. What's he doing that for? That's a good question. Now I have some other suggestions. Keep asking questions while you're reading and watch your report card shout, you're succeeding. When you ask questions like who did it and why and how did that happen? Where's that guy? You're making your mind work instead of just sitting back. You're zapping your brain like a pail of water on jack. Five, make connections. Like from the text to yourself and nearly every book you pull down from the shelf. Ask yourself how Harry Potter's like you, do you see? Unless you're a girl, then it's Hermione. <laughs> and it goes on like that. I mean, it's, uh, and then I wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it so, up. Oh, okay. The five strategies are easy to say. Making predictions, retelling, and hey, visualizing, and then asking all kinds of questions. And last but not least, making connections. Those are all five now. Take a nice nap. Because you just sang the reading strategies rap. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, clever, because not only are you teaching concepts of reading, you're actually teaching teaching concepts to the children so that they understand what you are trying to do for them and what you are trying to teach them. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, all right, so we did reading. Now, I know that you also have one that's very active. Uh, it's even grown outside of the classroom one of my favorite topics oh yeah i know what you're gonna say bullying yeah. uh, bullying has driven me crazy uh unfortunately it's growing and there's many different kinds of bullying um you know i just recently wrote a book called uh, return of the cicada and it's a story of a bully but an adult bully who actually caused the death of one of the protagonists father and I just want people to understand how dangerous bullying can be now I love your piece and I'm gonna ask you something I'm gonna ask you to read this whole piece oh okay because this to me is just precious so go for it well this is part of a play called yep. how to beat a bully Okay. And it's actually distributed all across the country to schools. Like a lot of people, I think 150 schools have, have purchased the play and they put it on. Um, this is the rap that's interspaced throughout the... Uh, okay, the, uh, now read this the, one the slowly because I, okay. I want people to get okay. the concept of what you're saying here. Well, it starts off with the antagonist, the bully. Okay. Uh, it's a girl, actually, in this play. I'm a bully, I'm a bully. Hey, look at me. You don't listen to me, I won't let you be. I'll bug you and push you, be a general pest. I just won't stop till you say I'm the best. Why am I mean to you every day? It's none of your business, but I'll tell you anyway. Maybe I don't like the way that you look, or I don't like your clothes or your stupid notebook. Maybe it's because I don't think you're too tough. I don't need a reason, being a bully's enough. So when you see me coming, you better step aside. Because if I see your face first, you may just have to hide. You may just have to run off and squeal a few times. Because when I see you, I'm going to ring ding your chimes. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to Anthony, Juan, Katie Ann, and Sue. Oh, if I look at them twice, they better ski do. Because I'll show them no mercy. I'll show them I'm tough. I don't need a reason. Being a bully's enough. Yeah. Then the kids come in. 
the, the protagonist and the little kid, they're smaller, and they say as a chorus, they're together, they say, you're a bully, you're a bully, you're mean and you're cruel. I hope you meet a bigger one who kicks like a mule because there's always someone bigger and stronger, you know, and sooner or later you'll get yours, and whoa, I want to see that. I'd pay plenty just to be there, see the bully get bullied. That'd be so cool. Oh, yeah. You've taken my candy and my money for lunch. You tripped me and poked me and landed a punch, but you can't break my spirit. You can't control me. You think you're all that, but you're just all blubbery. Most people won't admit they're scared of you. Well, I may be scared, but I'm not breaking in two. I may be scared, but I'm not running like a fool. I have a right to feel safe in my very own school. Now, what's a bully do best? I can tell you with ease. They hit, punch, pu kick, push, pester, brag, and tease. They taunt, play mind games, insult my weight. They threaten, ridicule, annoy, intimidate. In short, they're very good at being very bad, but deep down they're cowards. Deep down they're sad. They have no real friends. They're awful at caring, at sharing. They're not good at kindness or friendship or caring. If they want you to like them, they have to use force. And, you know, that's no way to get friends, of course. Bullies need to have a gang of more bullies behind them. But in secret, there's lots of anger welled up inside them. My advice is gives bullies wide open spaces. They lose their temper as quick as they tie their laces. Bullies take out their anger on people they seek, especially the shy, the little, and the weak. If you're near a bully when he loses his cool, it's like walking blindfolded by a swimming pool. So stay away from bullies or just stand up straight. Bullies don't pick on kids who feel great. Don't droop your head. Don't knock your knees. Walk tall. Talk firm. Please don't freeze. Another secret about bullies, they all hate to lose. So don't play that game. It's your right to choose. Bullies think they win when they make you cry. Just stay calm. Walk away and say bye-bye. Bullies don't have any real friends, just kids who hang together until it all ends. But you have your friends, and if they get together, the bully feels weaker and might go forever. One of the bully's biggest, baddest dreams, taking away your self-esteem. But no matter what the bully tries to do, stay true to yourself and believe in you. Stay true to yourself, and that very truth will make you and your friends all bully-proof. And that's the wrap on bullies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, a lot of very important messages uh, about bullying, and it's important. And the nice thing is they can learn it and have fun learning it uh, and learn all the concepts. Now, now I know you've been spending a great deal of time on something that goes a little beyond fourth and fifth grade. Yeah. You're working with William Shakespeare in rap? I, I am. <laughs> I am. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I wrote a play called uh, Hamlet and Eggs. It's a full-length <laughs> comedy. In it, I wrote Hip Hop Hamlet. It's the, it's the last part of the play. has the, the hero doing a rap, and it sums up the entire plot of Hamlet in, in 10 pages, wow. but all rapped, all, all rhymed. Uh, you know, so I'll, if you like, I, I mean- I Yeah, give, give me a good taste of it. That, give give is, me a good taste of your ham this Hamlet is how and it Eggs. Began. <laughs> uh, okay. I, 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 I won't start, I'll, I'll save a little time by starting a little bit more in the middle. Okay. Good Prince Hamlet's melancholy. What, should I be bright and jolly? My dad is dead and my mom's big folly is marrying my uncle. Gosh, oh golly, well I guess that's just fine with me. So fine I say to be or not to be. Should I kill myself? That's the question. Anyone out there got a suggestion? Hey, should, uh, any, uh, should I shuffle off this mortal coil or stay alive and try to spoil what that smiling villain Uncle Claude is trying to do and prove him a fraud? Now, a theme of this play, one of Shakespeare's best, is Hamlet mad or just depressed? By mad, I mean off his rocker, okay? Or is he just faking it to get his own way? We ain't going to tell you during this show, mainly because we don't really know. But we do know the guy is holding a grudge. Wouldn't you if your mom got dragged through the sludge? Wouldn't you if your dad got drugged in the ear and then his ghost croaked out, get over here. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. You can smell it over here. You can smell it over here. Uh, just, I'm going to skip a little bit okay. and just do just a small little part. Meanwhile, Hamlet loves Ophelia mightily. Why not? She looks like Kira Knightley. <laughs> but when he starts, asking un, uh, starts acting unharmonious, she tells her dad his name's Polonius. This dude gives all kinds of good advice. He won't follow himself. Like, you don't think twice to tell the son Laertes to, to yourself be true. But when he talks to himself, he lies like a shrew. He says brevity is the soul of wit, but goes on and on. There's no end to it. Keep an eye on Hamlet, he says he to his daughter. Make sure he does what a good prince oughta. Uh, oh. 
She reports back that the dude is whack. Polonius, that hack, comes up with an attack. He tells a new king that his new wife, the queen, Hamlet is mad. He could cause quite a scene. So my advice to you is blah, 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 and maybe blah, try to blah, 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 hire a spy. <laughs> and it goes, it goes on like that. It's really the whole, the whole thing, Vinny, the whole play from So you're following beginning. your own teaching strategies. That's retelling the story, but retelling it in an exciting, fun way that kids can learn and understand. It goes back to what the, Tom Yoey and George Newell told me back in, in 2001. You want to educate kids? Hit them in the funny bone. Make it, make sure it's entertaining, mm -hmm. like, like Schoolhouse Rock, and then give them the facts. You yeah. know, what, uh, so that's what I try to do. Yeah, I understand exactly what you're saying. When, when I was teaching sixth grade years ago, I used to teach the prepositions by song. And, and they, the, the students used to learn about, above, across, between, after, against, amongst, for. These are prepositions, and we'll sing for you some more. Well, it goes on. And it's funny because about three or four years ago, I was standing in line waiting at a restaurant, and this gray-haired guy tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, Mr. Aquino, about, above, across, between, oh, no! after, against. <laughs> I said, you kept that in your head for 30 years? He said, oh, my God. Yeah. So it does. It does. It sticks, and it helps people learn. Now, what other Shakespearean pieces did you turn into raps? Well, I did Romeo and Juliet. That was my next one. <laughs> that should be interesting. Uh, it, it, was, it was fun to do. I, I read the play, and then I, I, I go through it really carefully, and I, I come up with a way to try to just say what's going on in a humorous way, a lot of anachronisms, but... Um, but it's fun, and the kids get it. How long does it take you to, to create a rap like this? Romeo and Juliet only took three days. Wow. Wow. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I, uh, of course, you have to know, you have to understand the story, because that's just what you're doing. You're giving them an understanding of what actually happened. In there. And yeah. Shakespearean plays aren't easy. I mean, some of them are very complicated. Well, that's the whole point, Vinny. I want to take the complication and, and the fear of the Shakespearean language and... and and understanding the, the manifold plot uh, uh, intricacies and just break it down to its simplest part. When I was in advertising, the whole idea was to take, take a rather complex idea and funnel it down and make it really simple and, something, and convince people, man, I want that. Wow. So how do you do that? How do you do it with Shakespeare? It can be done. I mean, I'll, I'll, let, me, let me read this and give you an idea. Go ahead. Uh, the nurse actually starts, <clears throat> she's my favorite character in the play. It starts with the chorus and the nurse. Two star-crossed lovers, remember that now, the star said they're not going to make it know how. Two star-crossed lovers, Rome, Juliet and Romeo, break their family's feud? Not on their life, oh no. Then the nurse says, two households in the 1% and above. In Verona they fought and fought and never loved. They've been feuding for ages. For what? None remembers. But their grudge smoked two lovers into burning embers. A plague on both your houses. A pox on all the men who'd rather be right and fight and fight than shake hands and shout never again. A plague on both your houses, Capulet and Montague. Two lovers paid the highest price because of the two of you. Who am I, you ask? I'm the comic relief. I'm the nurse. No one's worse at being relatively brief. I'll never say one word when three will do. I'm the nurse, and I curse, so watch out for that, too. <laughs> so the chorus says, two star-crossed lovers, Juliet and Romeo, break their family's feud down in their life. Oh, no. It all started, says the nurse, it all started when Romeo said, please be mine, to a Capulet girl named Rosaline. But she said, I'm sorry, you're just not my type, but give me a number, maybe we'll Skype. Then Romeo sighed and cried and whined, to, and his friend Mercutio whacked his behind. Come to the Capulet ball tonight. Maybe you'll find someone else who's just right. Oh, there's no one for me but Rosaline. Then he saw Juliet, the guy lost his mind. Two star-crossed lovers, Juliet and Romeo, Break their family's feuds, not on their life, oh no. Did my heart love till now? Forswear at sight, for, near, for I near saw true beauty till this night. She doth teach the torches to burn bright, for I near saw true beauty till this night. Anyway, it goes on like that. You get Maybe. the idea. Now, in addition to all of this, I know you are a playwright. Uh, I attended one of your plays oh. on Bleecker Street in New York City. Uh, the Seat of Abraham, a wonderful play. Thank you. Wonderful play. I even brought my grandchildren who loved it too. Uh, yeah. So where do you go from here? Well, 
first of all, with the wraps, yep. I, I want to, I want to, I guess, write at least ten, so that I've got about seven more to, uh, five more to do, five more to do. I've got, I think I have five here. Once I have that, I'd love to be able to get a group of rappers together and a camcorder, a video camera, come to the studio maybe. Man, and, there you uh, go. This is the and, place. And, sh and shoot these rappers. They have to memorize the lines or use a teleprompter. And, uh, and then uh, some of my students are great dancers. Uh, I bring them in here and, uh, and, and do, do a little, a simple little show of all, all ten or nine, whatever I write, uh, of these plays. And then just put it out on YouTube. Yeah. Put it out for free. Let teachers download it. Let kids download it. Uh, you know, the, I, I, I just, I, I want people to love Shakespeare as much yeah. as I do. So all of, or most of your work is geared toward education, mm, well, teaching children. Ah, go no, ahead. You got me there. It's not, it seems like it, but no. The, the, the play you saw, The Seed of Abraham, right. is a musical and uh, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a comedy drama. It has a, a strong message, but uh, it's, it's not, although people come out learning more, it's not, it's really for entertainment. So mm -hmm. I, I, I have, I've written a lot of comedies, a lot of one-act comedies and like that. All right, so your dream. What is your dream work, oh. Bob? Uh, well, I'd, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to write uh, a full-length play, comedy, like a Neil Simon mm -hmm. type thing. Or Looking for Broadway? Allen. Broadway would be the best. In yeah. fact, when, when I thought Seed of Abraham really had a good shot. It got yeah, great I reviews. did too. <laughs> it was wonderful. It, and it got standing room only and, and applause. And so I was disappointed when no producer picked it up. Um, right. But it's not over. I mean, it's I, not you over. Know, we can repackage it. What are you working on right now? Uh, it's really, really the these Shakespeare. Wraps. And you, the, want, you uh, want to finish all oh, those Shakespeare? Oh, oh there is something else. There, there's a short play I'm doing uh, called um, "A Little Late." It's it's uh, it's a comedy uh, with a, with a message, uh, but that'll be it's a one act comedy. I, I'm always I'm always working on one act comedies too. Sounds great. Are they all musicals? No, no, no. The, the this uh, the raps are. I, it's hard to call them musicals. Yeah, They're just but, syncopated but they are in a sense rhyme. because they they do have meter and they do have beat and that I think that's one of the attractive parts of it. Uh, well, Bob, let me tell you something. Yeah, I think what you're doing is wonderful. Uh, I've been in teaching for a long time. I know that anything we could do to make teaching easier for children is a wonderful thing. So you're doing a wonderful thing. I want you to keep doing that wonderful thing. <laughs> and you. I want to thank you for being with us today. Oh, my uh, pleasure. You did a great job, and you need to keep doing that great job. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing these things maybe even get published uh, in some form where a person could buy it or a teacher can use it. Uh, you said you're going to try to put it online. Good thing. Yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so... Keep on keeping on, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the, certainly the Shakespearean plays. But again, thank you for being here my today. My pleasure. Thank you, Vinny. Yep, my pleasure. And we'd like to thank you for joining us on our show. Bob, again, thank you very much. Uh, great job. Uh, I think what you're doing is